So in the last tutorial, which was part one of the calculation of value at risk at Darwin X, um, we got as far as um, basically getting our position data from the last 45 market days, that position data being representative of the trader's most recent up-to-date risk behavior. Um, we highlighted that each position gives us duration and deleverage among other variables, but for our purposes for calculating value at risk, we need only concern ourselves with duration and deleverage. To go forwards with those Monte Carlo simulations, we first need to make an adjustment to the way we do things. Given that our 45, given that our reference period for uh, capturing the risk-taking behavior of the trader as representative, 45 is not equivalent to our target horizon of in value at risk calculations, which is one month or 21 trading days. Therefore, using the position data we have that contains duration and deleverage for each position that was taken during that um, reference period, we need to hence construct 21 day snapshots and to capture all of the behavior that ensued in this 45 market day reference period, we are hence going to go ahead and construct 20 months worth of 21 day snapshots. So 20, 20 months worth of snapshots encapsulating all that risk taking behavior. With each snapshot, we will then have this sort of table where we have the number of the position, we're gonna have the duration of the position, the deleverage, of that position, hence leverage if taking an equivalent trade on the euro dollar. One, two, all the way through to n minus one, or sorry, n in this case. Let's imagine the first position is 15 minutes and it took a, it had a deleverage of eight, hence eight to one leverage trade on the euro dollar. Let's say this was one hour, six minutes, and that was 6.7, so on and so forth. For each of these 21 day snapshots, we're then going to simulate 500 random return series using the duration and leverage as specified in the position. Imagine we have the price behavior of the euro dollar looking something like this over the last one year. Where to conduct a simulation, we're going to essentially target a completely random entry and a completely random exit such that the duration of the trade is equal to the duration as specified in the position and the leverage taken on the trade is from the position as well taken extracted from the leverage so here we have for instance the first trade where we took on a ignore the scales 15 minutes worth of a position and here the position the trade was taken at 8 to 1 we do the same for each and every trade, thereby creating a return series for that 21 day period that may look something like this. Let's say that return is 18%. We repeat this 500 times and that results in several return series because remember, we're randomizing entries and exits, uh, so open and close directions of trades are completely irrelevant. We are randomizing it such that the risk-taking behavior is captured and everything else is ignored. By doing so, we get a number of return series that look something like this. Some would be extremely lucky ones, generating returns to the tune of maybe 100% or more or less, doesn't matter. It's completely random and here we have minus um, 41% something to that effect essentially we have 500 return series here for that snapshot and if you aggregate 500 return series captured for a single snapshot that contained 21 trading days worth of representative risk taking based on the 45 market day reference period that we took in the beginning if you aggregate that 20 times meaning ca calculate this create the same, conduct the same simulation for each snapshot containing 21 representative days worth of position taking activity by the trader, you get a very large distribution of returns that looks something like this. So be very dense. So we're just gonna randomize this. And 
obviously we won't be able to draw 10,000 over here since that is the number of simulations we've conducted by going through 20 snapshots of 21 day trading activity, 21 day position activity, but essentially we're going to get a dense group of aggregated return series based on trades taken on the euro dollar for, the, for using data from the euro dollar for the last one year. Some of these will be magnanimous. Some of these will be really poor. Most of these will converge in between the maxima and minima. But what is happening here is that we're going to end up with a distribution from which we can more adequately estimate the value at risk of this trading strategy as follows. Let's imagine the mean of this trading strategy is here. We rank all the returns from simulation one through to simulation 10,000. Simulation one having the highest return in any simulation experience throughout this process. Simulation 10,000 having the lowest return experience in any one simulation. And to calculate the 95th percentile or 95% value at risk, or consider this period, we're essentially going to have to find the 95th, 9,500th simulation that took place. And let's imagine that that value at 95 percentile was say negative 38 percent. The value at risk at 95 percent confidence over a fixed time horizon of one month for a trading strategy that initially demonstrated fantastic returns is minus 38 percent in this case. Bear in mind that we're taking example values here but the idea here is to be able to capture uh, two things. One, a more adequate measure of the value at risk of the trading strategy. And two, due to the fact that we're using actual market data, we're using the data for the euro dollar over the past one year, which is the same reference period as was used in the deleverage calculations to assess the risk of the trading uh, decisions made by the trader versus the risk of assuming a similar trade on the reference asset, the euro dollar. We're going, keeping those things consistent, we're able to hence arrive at simulations of this nature, whereby we aggregate randomized entries and exits using the same risk-taking behavior as demonstrated by the trader over that period, construct 20, 21 day snapshots to encapsulate um, all combinations of behavior experience during that 45 day reference period and end up creating 500 simulations per snapshot times 20, meaning we have 10,000 simulations to then deal with. This allows us to better approximate a more realistic value of what would have happened if 10,000 random strategies had demonstrated the same risk-taking behavior as this trader on the euro dollar using the trader's risk preferences in terms of duration and leverage assumption. And this is effectively how we calculate value at risk uh, at DarwinX. So hopefully that has been explanatory. And uh, in future tutorials, we're going to go ahead and talk about the relationship between the volatility of uh, past returns and the value at risk of a trading strategy. See you in the next tutorial.